Welcome back to the Youth Salem podcast. So we're very lucky to have Mickey Beckett joining us. Can you tell a bit about yourself and your background in the sport? Sure, yeah. Um, thank you for having me along. So I learned to sail at quite a young age. I grew up in Pembrokeshire in Wales, which is kind of rural countryside, not a whole lot going on. Uh, I learned to sail when I was five. My dad was a sailing instructor and I spent a lot of my time growing up. There wasn't a whole lot else to do, so I spent a lot of time growing up sailing with my brother. Uh, sailing toppers and I sailed toppers as about 15. Uh, I got introduced to, I think a family friend invited us to a topper nationwide in Mumbles. That was kind of local, like two hours away when I was 10. And I did that with a banana tape to my mast and an aft, aft main sheet topper. I don't think they make them anymore. And that, that was kind of that really. And, you know, I ended up doing a lot of sort of traveling nationally. And then when I was... Uh, 15, moved into radials uh, or Ilka 6s and then when I was eight, 17 or 18 I moved into Ilka 7s I uh, went to university in Southampton did a degree in ship science um, which I've forgotten all of it <laughs> and, um, graduated when I was 21 and moved to where I currently live now in Portland in Dorset where the sailing academy and the British sailing team are based and I've sailed full time for the last 6 years, coming on 7 now actually yeah, that's me. Where did you start sailing and how did you start to develop past that point? Uh, I started sailing in Solver, which is a village I grew up in, uh, just kind of with friends. Um, and I guess to, to develop past that point, I just did more sailing, you know, more races, harder races with better people, um, traveling further afield. You know, in sailing, I think you're only, you're probably only as good as the people you've got to beat or to race against. So, you know, once you won your local regional events, you have to find, you know, bigger and harder events in, in theory. Um, although the, in the reality in my case was that very little winning of events was involved, but I did end up going to bigger and bigger events. So as a junior, <laughs> when did you first think you wanted to do sailing professionally? Uh, oh, I didn't as a junior. Uh, no, it probably, it probably only crossed my mind. It, to be honest, I didn't even know that you could really be like full-time sailing was a thing it just it just never really occurred to me I was yeah. I never really looked beyond probably what I'd say a year I think that the, the most kind of long-term planning I did was thinking oh, I'll be really nice to finish I don't know top 15 at the youth nationals next year I think I remember when I was about 17 or 18 I remember knowing personally some people who were full-time so some of the guys who are in the what was then the laser standards called the Olympic development squad I remember knowing them personally, realizing that they weren't at university, they weren't at school, they didn't have a job, they didn't seem to have any money either, but they were full time sailing. And that was the first time that it just occurred to me that it was even possible. And then I started to consider it. Um, so that would be about 17. Uh, are you sailing any of your boats from the laser? Yeah. So I, I, I've done little bits and pieces. My big brother, he um, runs the crew on a king, a boat called King 40 called Cobra. Uh, which races on the Solent in IRC1. So a few weekends a year, I'll do some role on that, either near the back doing tactics or um, near the front, trying to figure out what all the ropes do. I've um, done a little bit of actual sailing. Um, I like to do sort of kite surfing and sort of, uh, you know, water sports in my spare time. So out of all the places you've sailed, where's your favourite? Uh, what's your favourite place? Hmm. I get asked this a lot, and every time I'm never that confident in my answer. I think purely as a sailing venue. I don't know if you guys have been there, but Lake Garda is very tough to beat. Have you been there? Yeah, we went there over the summer for World Championships. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? Yeah, and we had a bit of a dying wind over the week because of storms, but first few days yeah. was perfect. Yeah, it's just it's just stunning. Like visually, it's stunning in a place where you can get well. Maybe it sounds like you didn't quite get it, but like yeah. typically, you get such a reliable breeze. That's quite a, a rare thing. Um, yeah. So yeah, I'll, I'll go with Garda. During your career, what is it? What has been your biggest event, and how did you handle the pressure? Biggest event, uh, basically the, the World Championships. Uh, every single year are are the biggest event. It'd be pretty hard for me to say, you know, the World Championships last year were more pressure than the um, previous year. Um, in terms of, you know, how to handle the pressure, I think, you know, I think learning to handle pressure is something you learn about your whole life. As long as you're sailing, you're, as long as you're doing difficult things, you'll be still be learning how to handle pressure and 
that you know I'm no exception I'm still learning but I think what I've learned so far is that you know first things first like don't panic um do you know when you have pressure you know you have to trust yourself and your processes like you know in the run-up to world championships I do lots of training I do lots of preparation I think long and hard about what skills I need um and I work hard and I can place trust in all that work it's sort of like you know building a reliable car when it comes to race that car you know that you spent the time making it good and you know reliable in the areas that it needs to be so I think taking confidence from the work you've done is is very important and then just I think having some clear goals quite often helps so you know you have saving goals it might be starting upwind and what's quite often a good idea when you have a big event is to to tailor those goals around the event or the type the type of conditions you're likely to get so if you know you're going to get offshore breezes for example um you know really gusty you know I remember when I've had events like that I've always had the goal of you know get to pressure you know spot the pressure get to the pressure don't worry so much about all the other boats just spot the pressure get to the pressure keeps it simple keeps all the noise away allows your brain to work clearly and I think that's actually quite a good way of dealing with pressure that I've found generally before an event how long in advance do you start training at the venue? Oh, uh, a, no- a normal event, about five days, five, six days. Um, so, for example, we've got Palmer World Cup coming up in a, a month, and I'll basically, uh, it starts on Monday. The Sunday beforehand, I'll take off, and I'll arrive about Tuesday. So I'll go sailing Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday off, saving Monday. That's typically how i do it but i might alter a little bit if depending on the forecast so as a junior what was your best result in one of your events uh so probably i won the i won the top of nationwide series i won i think i won two nationwide as well um that was about I, about as good as i got really what has been your biggest rival in your career biggest rival oh that's an interesting question um probably I've been in uh I've been in squads with Elliot Hansen for a very long time. Um, he's good, the very good friend, and I, I wouldn't say it necessarily his rival, but I think because we do we've done an awful lot of training together, you know, we quite often we you know we train together and push each other. Then we do an event together, and quite often we're quite both near the front. Um, so I think I probably raced him more often than anyone else. Right now we're I believe we're currently ranked first and second in the world as well. Um, so I think I've done more racing against him than. Anyone. So would you choose Elliot Hansen as your training partner out of anyone else or is it someone else? Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. Like he, he's very good to he's very disciplined. Um, generally speaking, we don't get to choose absolutely whoever we want because we it's it's a lot, well, for a start, it's a lot more convenient to train with people who live near you. So I'm sure you guys sail with people who live near you. You might want to sail with someone, but if they live in Scotland or you know, miles away, then that's just not practical. And Elliot and I both live in the same place. Before an event starts, what is your routine that you always do? Is that like the morning or the, the days leading up to it? Or uh, pre- oh, go, let's days leading up let's, to it and yeah. morning. All right, I'll get. I'll tell you, I do both. Uh, all right, days leading up to it. Um, I generally in the particularly like the two days before an event, I want to do less like physical stuff. So, I, so, for example, I told you I'd take the day before a regatta and normally take that off. The day before that day, so two days before a regatta, I try and not sail for more than an hour and a half. Um, I'm trying to reduce the physical strain on my legs so that when racing starts, I'm good to go. That said, what's quite important when you do that is you still sail to a high quality. You know, you still high card as hard as you possibly can, but you don't do it for as long. So you reduce the duration, but you don't reduce the intensity. Um, so it's still good quality training. Um, I to obviously make sure my boat's ready, um, you know, just try and be organized. I don't want to be rushing around the morning of the event going, oh my God, my ropes are about to snap. I want all that done. I want to turn up on the first day of racing. No, my boat's good. I'm rested. I'm good to go. Um, and I think, I think by the time it gets to the morning of Gatta, there's not much I'll do different on the morning of day one that I'll do differently on the morning of day five. It's, you know, turn up with a little bit of spare time in case anything goes wrong have a chat with my coach and we go right the weather looks like this if tides involved we'll discuss that um not long don't need to labor anything and then um go out and get on with it really before a <laughs> night before a sailing event, do you have a certain meal you have certain meal 
No, I wouldn't have a certain meal. I, I think there's certain things I would like, you know, I try and eat during the whole event and during most of the training I do because I know that it sets me up well. You know, I, I wouldn't go and have a 18 inch pizza or a fish and chips, you know, something that involves vegetables because they're good for your immune system than like probably more carbohydrate than normal. If I think the next day is going to be, you know, five, six hours on the water, then yeah, I'll, I'll just eat more potatoes or rice or pasta or whatever it is. And I always try and eat vegetables because they're good for you. Do you play any other sports in sailing? Uh, no. So I used to play rugby pretty badly, to be honest. I was about 15. Um, and then it was kind of getting to the point where every Sunday there'd be the rugby game. and But I'd also supposed to be sailing. And I was a lot better at sailing than I was at rugby. And I wasn't very good at rugby. So that decision was quite easy. Um, since then, I've probably only done sports that are... So I do quite a lot of cycling. A bit of running, a bit of rowing on rowing machines. Um, I don't know if they count as playing sports. Just generally, I, I quite enjoy those things. And they also help with their part of, you know, staying fit. When you're not sailing, what's your favourite things to do? Right, I quite quite enjoy kite surfing. That's quite good fun. It's quite different from laser sailing because it's quick, essentially, and it's sort of much more of an, an adrenaline sport. Um, I like to surf, but I'm not that good at it, to be honest, so I don't go that often. Um, and at the moment, I've just got a house which needs doing up, so I've been busy painting and creating dust and smashing things with hammers and that's actually I quite enjoy that that's quite good fun as well what is your plans for the future are you campaigning for Paris 2024 uh yeah I'm campa campaigning for Paris 24 um I don't know I mean I don't know how long I sell for I mean at the moment I enjoy it um I have a small job working as a producer at um CLGP so I basically help them as someone that understands sailing I help them choose the right shots which is a job that I enjoy. And if I want, hopefully I'll be able to do more of that after sailing. Um, so I'll, I'll just see how things go. Take it one year at a time. I'm not that good at planning that far in advance. So from your biggest fan in our South RTG, they want to know what what is it like being looked up to? What is it like being looked up to? Uh, to be honest, it, it's, it's very flattering. Like it, it's, it's nice that people take an interest. Um, I don't, you know, I probably look at myself a bit differently. I, I get to see all the mistakes I make on a daily basis, you know, like turning up to the sailing club with two left boots or just something really dumb like that that people would never think I'd do, but I do make all those really silly mistakes. So, um, no, it, it's 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 very nice, and it's always nice when people take an interest in what I do. Like, I'm quite passionate about sailing. I enjoy it. I'm a big advocate for the sport. I think it can offer a lot to anybody. So if anyone's interested in what I do, then I'm... I'm almost invariably happy to chat chat to them about it well thank you so much for letting us talk with you and learn about your journey is there anything anything you'd like to add anything you'd like to add uh no just uh, where are you guys at with your sailing i haven't asked you any questions yet uh well we're both in the RG, south rtg and we're in our final years of toppers we're mo both moving into a fever actually together just bought a yeah boat. yeah doing nationals and fevers later this year and oh, very good. World champ in July. So have you got one of the new toppers, the new rotor molded, molded ones? No, we haven't. No. Nah. Oh, I saw them at the dinghy show. They look really interesting. See have you tried difference. it yet or just seen it? No, we've just seen it. We'll see if we can arrange a test test run at some point, maybe. But yeah, looks really interesting. Yeah, I'll be interested to see how it matches up to the older toppers. Ah, well, well, best of luck with the fever, fellas. That'll be, that'll be good. Yeah. Who's, who's driving? I'm home. So. Yes. No pressure.